Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion related to error analysis and control systems. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about uh, a very important concept. So, so far the steady state error analysis which we have discussed, okay, it was with relation to systems with unity feedback okay so that's why in every uh, question also we used to first pinpoint whether it has been mentioned that the feedback is unity okay the gain of the feedback system is unity so the system is generally something like this okay this is the forward path transfer function then it is unity feedback okay the gain of the feedback path is equal to unity this kind of systems we are normally dealing with so here this is the gain is equal to 1 okay the feedback path unity feedback but in reality the feedback path always has some value which is other than one okay mostly you will uh, come across systems like this this is the forward path transfer function this is the feedback path transfer function which is different from one okay this is the summing block this one output CS it passes through this non-unity feedback path and this is RS okay so again this is negative feedback here also it is negative feedback this is the error signal which is given so here this feedback path transfer function is very important okay here simply the error signal is equal to rs minus cs okay here it is rs here simply it is cs because cs when multiplied with 1 becomes cs so here it is the error signal with unity feedback is very simple rs minus cs but here it is not like that okay here the error signal is not like that in case of finite feedback you know it's non-unity feedback systems so here an important term comes into play which is called as DC gain of the feedback path okay HS this one involving this so the DC gain is expressed you can express it by this symbol you can express it by any other symbol but normally this is used K subscript H so this is given as it is uh, determined by final value theorem so it is limit s tends to 0 HS okay this is for a type 0 system so when HS has no pole at origin, okay, when HS has no pole at origin, this is the value of DC gain. Then for a type 1 system, it is equal to limit S tends to 0, SHS for a type 1 system, okay. When the feedback path transfer function has one pole at origin we are talking about HS here okay and this is equal to limit S tends to 0 S square HS for a type 2 feedback path system and when the feedback transfer function has n poles at origin it is given by limit s tends to 0 s to the power n hs 
So basically this S is multiplied with HS, S to the power N is multiplied with HS to cancel the S okay, in the denominator so that we can get a finite DC gain result. Okay, so this is a type N system. Otherwise, either we'll get zero or infinity, something like that. And we don't want that. We want to get a finite non-zero result. To get a finite non-zero result, we are using this approach. So when it is type zero, no pole at origin, no need to multiply any S. When it is type one, means one pole at origin in the denominator, in that case, we multiply S in the numerator to cancel out both the S's in the numerator and denominator so that we get a finite non-zero result. Similarly, for type 2 system, we multiply S square because there is S square in the denominator, two poles at origin. So likewise, so this is the DC gain of the feedback path, okay? The DC gain of the feedback path. Now how this DC gain comes into play? So here the error signal is something like this, expressed something like this. KH EAS is equal to RS minus KH CS this this is how the error signal is expressed okay khes is equal to rs minus khch where kh is the dc gain of the feedback system es is the error signal rs is the input cs is the output so here we can express it as es is equal to rs by kh minus cs when we divide kh throughout <coughs> so this will be equal to rs taking common 1 by kh minus cs by rs cs by rs is the closed loop transfer function <coughs> sorry so we can write it as rs into 1 by kh minus gs by 1 plus gs hs this this is the expression of the error signal now we know that the steady state error okay the steady state error is given by by final value theorem okay ESS steady state error is equal to limit t tends to phi et in the time domain and is equal to limit s tends to 0 s es in s domain so here steady state error will be equal to limit s tends to 0 s multiplied with this es that is this here which is equal to limit s tends to 0 s multiplied with rs into 1 by kh minus the closed loop transfer function 1 plus gs hs this is the expression of steady state error for non-unity feedback systems. This is for non-unity feedback systems. Okay, For unity feedback, it was very simple and straightforward, but for non-unity feedback systems, first, the first step is to find out the DC gain of the feedback path, Okay, this HS. So it is equal to this for type 0 simple limit, limit s tends to 0 at uh, hs for type 1 we have to multiply s in the numerator for type 2 it is s square for type n s to the power n 
once we get the value of the DC gain, this is the equation of the error signal, okay, like this, ES. Then steady state error obtained by final value theorem, which is equal to limit S tends to 0 SES. So we substitute this value of ES here and we get the result. Okay, so we'll be solving some questions related to it to understand this method in a better way. Okay, so here we have discussed error analysis for non-unity feedback systems. So I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel Engineering Tutorial for more such videos related to engineering, science and technology. Have a great day. Thank you very much.